Hey everybody, Spartan here from SpartanTrading.com. I wanted to do a little bit of a different video today, kind of talk about the market sentiment, what's kind of going on, maybe some ideas and things that you should be looking at that you may not be aware of. I think uh, most you know proficient traders are kind of aware of this stuff, but maybe if you're newer to trading, um, this is going to be applicable for kind of uh, you know this environment, etc., going and going forward. Now, obviously, there's a lot of stuff going on in the market. Um, you know, the market's selling off. Um, a lot has to do with the you know coronavirus, the COVID-19 virus. Um, you know, obviously going across the globe. If you are unfamiliar with kind of why the sell-offs occurring, it's because it's basically of turning all these economies um, to a halt or a slowdown. You know, most of the businesses can't operate like they would be able to. Um, the way that we work and play is changing. You know, we can't go out into big um, areas where there's a lot of people because obviously we can contract this virus a lot easier. So the government's obviously putting an end to and shutting down a lot of these, you know, meetings of more than 500 people at any given point in time. We got you know, a lot of, uh, you know, leaks closing and stuff like that as well to hinder the spread of the virus. Now, because of that, there's a couple other things that are happening as well. You know, especially, you know, cruise ships, if you're unaware, you know, the government's saying not to go on cruise ships in the United States, which is obviously hurting those companies. And they're going to be hurt for, you know, probably years to come. Um, essentially, a lot of them are just stop, are going to stop operating for the next 60 months because they would be operating at a loss. And they'll probably continue to operate at losses as for sure bookings are going to be going down and there's going to be a lot of cancellations. So when we talk about this virus, we kind of got to understand from a macro perspective and a bigger picture perspective, what should be affected. Think about it anywhere where there's a public meeting place or whatever, that's going to be changing where there's going to be less people doing that. There's going to be less people going out and probably eating food. So we got to look at a few different things. Um, you know, in real short, you know, what's been affected so far, we can talk about things like the cruise ships, you know, CCL, RCL, which should see continued downside um, in this environment. They're getting to a point where they're getting extended to the downside, where we should start to see little bounces. But, you know, overall, until the environment changes, um, it's going to be the same sort of sediment. We look at things like, you know, Disney, where they have theme parks where there's a lot of people that go. And now they're talking about closing down the theme parks. Um, it's the same thing. They're not going to be able to generate as much revenue. It's going to hurt their earnings next season. And, you know, for the year for sure, they're going to have to lower their guidance, etc., which is what the basis of a stock price is based on, how much money a company is going to be generating in the future. If you think of it, think about it on this term, how much money is the stock going to be generating in the future? Is it now less because of this virus? Then you found a stock that should be, you know, going down or decreasing in the future. Obviously the entire market's kind of selling off because the whole economy is going to be slowing down because of this. So we can, you know, pretty much look at any sort of company that is affected by that and look to maybe take some short positions on it. Now, there's other things that we can look at on the long side. Any sort of company developing a drug to help, um, you know, help with fighting the virus, that could be something bullish. ABBV would be one of those companies, for instance. Gilead would be another. And then you have all these small little low float companies that are moving because of this as well. I think it's interesting, um, the low float sector at this point, with the biotech companies that are actually uh, targeting or have some sort of product to help fight this virus. And the reason for that is usually on the low float side, small stocks, what happens is there's a hot sediment. It's hot for a little bit, a short period of time, and then it fades off. And then these companies sell off. What's happening this time around is because this virus, this virus is going to be prevalent for, you know, the better case of a year. We don't know how it's going to be in the summer as much as we do um, now, there, you know, there's predictions, etc. But what we know is they're going to be talking about this in the media for months and months to come. If that sediment's going to be hot for months and months and months, these low float companies are going to continue to accumulate and have demand for them, which means that they can push and move a lot higher than what they would typically move at. So when we think about that, if we're going to be playing those low float companies, we got to understand that type of sediment, how it's changed from kind of the norm. And we need to understand that, especially if you're a short seller, that you could see prolonged runs on those small stocks. You've got to be a little bit more patient. Now, there's some you know small stocks that just come to mind that I've been running lately, like Affy, 
APT, um, Lake, AIM, AYTU, Codex, so on and so forth. A good idea because we can expect the sector to be, like I said, quote unquote, hot for a little bit to make a list of these and build a, you know, build a watch list, go through that watch list, look at these charts every single, maybe two days, chart out the patterns. Are we flagging to the upside? Is this a breakout pattern? Do we have more room higher? If this breaks, you know, breaks out of that higher, we're going to be going higher, etc. Set alerts on these things. You don't always have to be looking if you set alerts, but it's a great idea because these things are going to be in play to the upside for a while. Lastly, something to be looking at if you're not playing the market to the downside and you're only playing maybe longs, um, would be looking at volatility indexes. So look at something like the VXX, UVXY, obviously TVX is getting very expensive now, all the way up at $430. And you can play these things, you know, either intraday or on the swing side on pullbacks. They're a little bit extended to the upside here um, to help hedge or protect yourself um, against the downside. Now there's nothing wrong with playing the downside. I mean, that's what we've been doing in the swings, the swing chat, um, as well as the day trading. We're doing very well. Um, to the downside because there's a lot more range. But if you are trading intraday, especially in this market, one thing to remember is you need to be using hard stops because what happens with a large amount of range intraday is you can get trend changes pretty quick and the swings are not, you know, three or four points anymore intraday on some stocks. They're like 20 points. You know, something like Apple intraday now has a massive range. So we gotta be prepared to trade within that range. If we don't have stop set, hard stop set, then what's gonna happen is, you know, if the things are gonna go way too far us, our max risk is gonna go over and we're gonna lose quite a bit of money. So I keep, you know, pounding the table, guys. Make sure they're using hard stops in this market. So, you know, just a couple different things to think about. Um, you know, there's a couple different names here that you could be looking at. Definitely keep on your radar. And I think probably the last thing I really wanna just talk about is if you guys are looking for stocks to short, then one thing to be looking at and this is you know, just basic common fundamentals, is you wanna go after the names with the largest PE ratios. So stocks with high PE ratios are gonna be a little bit more overvalued in this tape. And what happens is these stocks tend to have higher betas, which means that they have more um, volatility when the market sells off, or they have more range when the market sells off or goes up. And because of that, there can be significant opportunities in that. You can go to a site like Finviz, you know, great site, you can search for stocks with, you know, a high PE. And based off of that, you can find a list of names that, you know, within a price range, let's say, that you could look to short or look to see if they break down because you want to get short on those names. So PE, let's just go high PE. Let's go over 30. Actually, let's go higher. Uh, let's go over 50. So over 50 PE ratio, let's say you like to play big cap stocks. So I change that to big cap. Let's go large cap, there you go. So high PE, large cap stocks, there you go. Whole bunch of different names. You got the PE ratios there. You can, um, whoops, sort them by the PE ratios. And just know that you know a lot of these names will have bigger swings because of that. The one thing you gotta think about when you're looking at shorting these types of names, especially if you're gonna be swinging them, is how are they affected by the coronavirus here? Are they, a beneficiary or are they negatively effective? You know, I, the reason why I say that, I look at a company like Zoom, where they're gonna be doing, where Zoom is obviously video conferencing, as people become more isolated from each other, especially work-wise, we're gonna need a way to communicate. So you would expect a company like that to benefit from, you know, more isolation in society because everyone's gonna be or having to use some sort of service like that. So, you know, think about that type of stuff as well. Anyways, just a, you know, quick little, um, summary of kind of what's going on, maybe some different thoughts if you haven't heard of this stuff. I think it's fairly basic what I'm talking about, but I think for new traders, maybe they're not thinking this way, so it's a good idea to kind of check this stuff out and consider it. Anyways, that's it for me, guys. If you guys do any, if you have any questions for me, you can go to spartan at spartantrading.com and shoot me an email, or you can just hit our uh, website up, spartantrading.com. Anyways, that's it for me, guys. You guys have a good rest of the day today. Thank you.